Hello and welcome to another episode of the Seven Shifts Restaurant Growth Podcast. I'm your host, DJ, and today I had the opportunity to chat with Ken McGarry. Ken has more than two decades of experience in the hospitality industry, and he's brought it all into his new book, The Surprise Restaurant Manager. We dive into what the book is about, why he decided to write it now. Um, you know, we also get into a particular chapter in the book about dealing with negativity, both from guests in your restaurant as well as from your coworkers and your boss. Ken also has some awesome advice for restaurant workers who recently came back to work and they're a little bit unsure about the future of the restaurant industry, as well as to those who haven't returned to work yet and they're a little bit unsure about whether they want to return to restaurant life. Uh, I really enjoyed this conversation and I hope you all do too. Enjoy. Hey Ken, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing, DJ? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing well. Thanks for coming on the show today. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, for those that don't know, Ken is the author of the new book, The Surprise Restaurant Manager. Um, and, you know, I'll let you go into it and, and kind of talk about your background and why you decided to write this new book. I'll get the shameless plug out of the way right at the beginning. It's uh, yes, Surprise Restaurant Manager. Called that because so often I, restaurants have people who are in management positions that were just handed the keys. They were bartenders, servers, and then they were just given managerial responsibilities, but zero training. And everything yep. from how to coach your team to how to truly support as a manager, and then dealing with stress and negativity are things that need to be coached. And if you don't have a mentor that's invested in why you're a restaurant manager, you truly need to investigate other methods of training, which is kind of where the book comes in. Yeah, so this is the book for if you're promoted to man, you know, your boss says you're the manager now, and you're like, well, what am I supposed to do? Right, exactly. This is the manual. Yep. And as you Absolutely. go further into the book, it really takes on more of a conversation about how do you sustain. So yeah. not only for beginning restaurant managers, but what you do in order to achieve growth or possibly dealing with the challenges of being a restaurant manager. Because quite honestly, it's boot camp. It is literally. Yeah something you go to because you want to go into a greater role. Cause why else would you become a manager from a bartender? Cause now you're working twice as many hours for half the pay. So yeah. there has to be a reason why you do that. And that's chapter absolutely yeah. awesome. Yeah. So um, I guess what kind of brought you to the point where you said, you know, I really need to, um, you know, write this book or, or what inspired it. And, and just a little bit about your background in the industry as well. So I came up the same way. A lot of people did started, started dishwashing when I was a kid. Um, I had the benefit of working at a showbiz slash Chuck E. Cheese. So I also got to wear the mouse outfit when I wasn't washing dishes. Nice. So yeah, that's, that's a real, that's a plus. Uh, <laughs> made my way through to front of the house, then into management. And then from there, just really found that I enjoyed it. And so I've been in Chicago. I was in Toronto, uh, New Orleans, I'm back in Chicago, and most recently, I've built my own company after working for some successful restaurant groups nationwide. The reason I kind of wrote the book was simply, I now that I'm working with a lot of different restaurant groups nationwide, I'm finding the same challenges, and I'm having the same conversations with managers. And it's gotten to the point to where I just started writing them down, because yeah. if it's Hey, are you, how are you coaching this person? Are you using terms like I think and I feel, or are you giving them measurables? Or, hey, when you had that conversation with that person, was there a witness there? And just very basic sort of conversations that I just have over and over and over again. So hopefully the book replaces me. It's you read the book and now I don't have to come to your town because yeah. you'll, you'll know a lot of it. Absolutely. Um... Yeah, and it's awesome. It goes through everything from, you know, you know, what we're going to talk about a little bit, dealing with negativity to, um, you know, do's and don'ts of visiting other people's restaurants, which I thought was a, a great chapter. Um, and just really is just kind of, you know, a 101 and, and then some for, you know, restaurant management. So you know, I wish we wrote a lot of this for seven chips, but, um, you know. You, you may us. take it use however you like. And again, it's it's on Amazon downloadable for 99 cents. And I did awesome. that because I want it out. So absolutely check it out. Cool. Um, yeah. So, you know, one chapter that I found particularly interesting um, that I'd love to kind of chat a little bit more about. Um, and it, it, it's a topic that I think a lot of people are chatting about when it comes to returning to restaurants and why people don't want to return to restaurants. There are a number of reasons. 
um, right now workers not returning, but one of them is that, you know, they don't miss having to deal with negativity in the restaurant, which is a little all too prevalent, um, you know, coming from customers or coming from other um, people that they work with. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, love to kind of chat about that chapter and your philosophy for how to deal with that without taking it too personally and without it kind of ruining your shift or ruining your, your experience in working. In this. Well, even before everything that just recently happened globally, it was always a challenge to work with negativity. And simply as a restaurant manager, part of what you're doing is talking to guests, figuring out where the failures are, where we call them those opportunities, and then being able to try to fix those. But that also means that you have to be very open and very willing to accept criticism and however it's presented. And that's one of the reasons managers stop touching tables is they don't want to deal with the negativity. And yeah. it's because traditionally when somebody complains, they're complaining and you're responding on an equal level. That's where you'll see people who will complain about, oh, this steak is undercooked and people will battle right back and say, actually, ma'am, no, it's not. And that never works because yeah. all you're doing is meeting aggression with equal aggression. And whether it's table touching within the restaurant or online reviews after, there are methods in order to take what I call two steps back to truly understanding why people complain and what the psychology of who they are and when they're doing that. And if you look at it from that lens, instead of it being an equal, you know, meeting, meeting equal aggression, then it won't bother you as much. Yeah. And that's an interesting one. It's, it's you know, I think, um, you know, a lot of people do that. They'll, you know, they'll, they'll meet with aggression, um, you know, which is not the best way, but you know, a lot of people say they'll take a step back. Um, but you know, you kind of get into why that's not enough. Sure. Because I, I use the example in the book of somebody complaining about a steak saying that they wouldn't feed it to their dog. And I've had that, I've had that exact comment. And of course your first response is you become defensive because you care about the brand. And also there's a very good possibility that that steak is prepared just fine, yeah. but you have to kind of take one step back and understand the reason why people complain in the first place. It could be that their expectation was very, was one way and that that wasn't being met. It could have a lot of things doing with factors that don't really include your restaurant, whether it's something going on at work, or maybe this is an important business meeting or whatever their reasoning for complaining might not truly be connected to you. But the number of times that people think that the steak was prepared improperly intentionally it's always surprising to me, but then you have to take two steps back. Now that you understand their motivation for why they're complaining, you have to look at yep. it and say, okay, well, if this is an important meeting or if this is sticker shock, or if you actually intentionally think that we did this to ruin your day, yeah. then, then all you have is pity and all you have yeah. is compassion and go, uh, really, this, is, this, this isn't the thing. And you feel bad for these people. And yep. Not to say that everybody that complains uh, deserves pity, but that's the, it's the aggressiveness to it. Yeah. It's that I just had this last week to where somebody got in my face and effed me and, you know, called me bro and all of these things. <laughs> and my immediate response was, uh, gosh, I kind of want to throw punch you, but that's not yeah. the response. I was, no. it's very easy to stay in equal aggression, but two steps Absolutely. back, I realized why he complained he was embarrassed by something that had happened. It made him feel uncomfortable. And so I can only meet that with, with compassion. So that two steps back is really the methodology that allows you to not internalize why people are so upset. Yeah. And now yeah. post COVID, we're doing more with less. It's Absolutely. not the restaurants of 2019. We don't have the staffing. So people yeah. that are excited about coming back to restaurants, God love you. Thank you for coming. But realize in some places up to 50% of our workforce didn't come back. So yeah. if you're used to a level of attentiveness or a level of speed of service, it's not there right now. Not say it won't be, but it just isn't. So that, that fosters negativity as well.
Absolutely. You know, and it's important to keep in mind, I think that the, you know, the restrictions, you know, put on diners and, and all of that, you know, there's even more of those put on to the people that are behind the scenes in the restaurants and the people that are serving you. So, um, you know, it's not okay to treat people that work in restaurants, you know, aggressively, but, you know, I guess if you're working in the restaurant and that happens to you, it's important to realize too, that it's not something that you should ever take personally, um, you know, and it's something that should be not escalated. True. And you have to, I, I liken it to online reviews. You see these reviews that people leave and they're like four paragraphs. And you really think if you take it from a surface level response, then your response is, well, some of this isn't real. And look at this person and maybe they just want a free meal and all of this. But I've never, I've never had that level of passion to where I'm going to write four paragraphs about my dinner. Never. Yeah. And I'm a writer. So... <laughs> Think of the level of passion that they had and then that level of disappointment that they carry. But the good news is if you care that much to like write that much down, I can get you back. I can 100% save your experience, reinvite you into the restaurant and make it better. And I can do the same thing at a table with somebody who has that much negativity because all that is is passion. I think of it like a, like a relationship. Relationships don't die when you're still arguing. It's never right. in the heat of an argument. It's always when you get to the whatever, that's when it dies. It's apathy. It's, oh, I don't care. I'm not going to fight anymore. That's yeah. the death of a relationship. It's people who complain, again, God love you for doing it because it's better that we know than not. You just can't yeah. absorb the blows as a manager or take it personally. Absolutely. And that's the key to growth, I think, as well. Um, you know, another section, you know, in that same chapter, you kind of get into, the, you know, similar things, but, you know, also, you know, with your coworkers and with your team. And um, I just think it's so important that people working in restaurants are lifting each other up and, and working well together um, and supporting each other. Um, so, you know, if you can also just get into some of, you know, the advice you have for, you know, dealing with negativity at work. So yes, absolutely. The challenge is that you work alongside somebody and they might carry a level of negativity or aggression. And you have to take steps back and understand why, why they're yep. being this person. Uh, you know, the, the common example is a server will complain that the host isn't seating them. Oh, you know, Becky at the host stand, she, I, I don't think she likes me. She never seats me in rotation. Well, the response from a manager oftentimes is either, no, that's not true, which is just equal aggression back to aggression. No, you're wrong. Yeah. Or maybe they take one step back, which is to say, oh, Todd, you know, that's not the case. People like you and it's fine. But again, that just coddles some sort of like mom, dad, psychologist sort of response that mm -hmm. doesn't really work to manage with people. So you take a second step back, that conversation when Todd complains that the host is not seating him properly is to say, well, these are measurable things. We can absolutely look at how it's working within the following week and see where you're being set versus everybody else. That's why we have a reservation system. Meanwhile, it's also something to look at and seeing, uh, well, I guess just very basically explaining that a host doesn't have any sort of input or desire to not see you. And you shouldn't be working for such an emotional based response. Those sort of conversations get down to measurable results and things that you can like work with your team with instead of living in the I think and I feel sort of responses. And that's where people get trapped up is emotions versus data. Absolutely. You know, I was talking to, um, you know, the last episode of the show, Jensen. Uh, Cummings and he was talking about you know we're not in the food business we're in it's it's the people business it's really you know of course we serve food in restaurants and that's a lot of the reason people get into it but at the end of the day it's it's not really about the food it's about you know the people whether that's the people you're working with or the people that you're you know serving mm -hmm. without question and I think restaurants the reason that we are in restaurants and the reason that we stay in restaurants is because we truly like the hospitality we like the hustle we like the chaos and we enjoy hosting the party for others. And with the lack of staff, the people that remain 
remain so because they actually care and that this industry is for them. So we might be doing more with less, but the people that are still working in restaurants are there because they love it. And that's, that's great and admirable. Absolutely. Yeah. And just to kind of zoom out a little bit too, um, you know, with, with the book and, and with the work that you're doing, um, you know, what do you suggest is the best way that people use this book? Is this, is this more for people that are doing the promoting of managers and the people that are bringing people up? Or is it more for the, the person that, um, you know, finds themselves in this management position, but doesn't really know what to do? Well, I, I often tell freshman managers or people that are interested in management to read the book as you would traditionally from chapter one through. Yep. And then my friends who've been in the industry for a while, I tell them, read it backwards because mm -hmm. the last chapter is now that you're in the industry, how do you conduct yourself at other restaurants or in your own restaurant? And then there's a quiz to see if you are able to answer some of the questions. And then there's something about how to promote yourself in order to move to the next position. So the progression from front to back builds from more of a freshman response all the way to things that are worthwhile for anybody in the restaurant industry. So if you've been around for a while, read it backwards. Absolutely. So for everyone who has any sort of questions about management or just even wants just a refresher, um, it's been a while since they've kind of thought about, you know, the role and things like that. So that's awesome. Yep. Yep. Cool. That's, that's, that's a fair assessment. Yes. Um, and I guess lastly, you know, working in the industry right now is tough for a lot of people. Um, you know, what advice would you give the restaurant worker that's, that's a little bit unsure about going back to work or they're back and they're not sure if they want to do it anymore um, just because of everything that's been happening? You know, where do you see things going and, and what advice would you give to that person? I would give the advice to make sure that you are dedicating your time for somebody who's truly appreciative of it. It's, it's, definitely more true now than it ever has been. If you are a good server or a good bartender, you can get a job anywhere, legitimately yep. anywhere. And your management should function from the standpoint of not, you're so lucky to work for us. It should be, thank you so much for working here. You make the conscious choice every morning to choose to come into work here. And we appreciate that. And throughout the last year, some restaurant tours chose to pivot. And instead of trying to go through traditional avenues, turn their kitchens into community food banks and worked to develop the community and have been really, really exceptional leaders during this very challenging time. And those places are not having the same challenge of staffing as other ones are simply because for the last year, they were seen as the people in the community that were just helping out. So yeah. if, if you're a server or bartender or a manager, please hold your company to task of being the type of leaders that you wanna emulate and that you wanna work alongside. And otherwise, find the people that are, because there are definitely a lot of very, very good restaurateurs who need some help. Absolutely. And I think that's all we have time for today, but thank you so much for coming on the show. DJ, um, it was great. great chat. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Seven shifts. Really, really appreciate it. Of course. And where can people find you and uh, as you as well as the book? Uh, Amazon's the easiest place, the audiobook, the 99 cent e version, and then the print copy. Uh, if you want to support independent, then bookshop.com is also a great place for independent uh, sellers. Awesome. Well, Ken, thanks again. You as well, DJ. Thank you. Thanks again for listening to this episode of the Seven Shifts Restaurant Management and Growth Podcast. For more great content, you can check out our blog at sevenshifts.com slash blog. You can also find us on every social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, at Seven Shifts. Thanks again.